So welcome. I'm Kenneth Tyne. I am U.S. Editor of The Drum, and I am delighted to be here today with the jury head for the Drum Awards for B2B. Allison Biggin is Global Head of Corporate Marketing, SAP. So welcome, Allison. Thanks, Ken. Good to be here. Great to have you. So we're gonna just talk a little bit about what great work looks like and, and some of the trends that are impacting B2B, which is really quite a dynamic space right now. So we're anticipating some really strong entries and some really interesting work. So so Allison, in your opinion, you know, just overall, you know, what what makes good work? Yeah, look, I think as you look out across what's happened in the world over the last 12 to 18 months, we've seen, you know, many things change, but also I think we've seen lots of opportunity for some of the great work that was already being done to really shine through. And, and I think as a, a B2B marketer, right, I think a lot about the relevance of what we're saying to the audience and the importance of making sure that the things that we're talking about matter to them. And I think if anything, the last you know, period of time has shown us that there are things happening in B2B that really are at the core of how the world works, right? The things that we rely on, whether that's coming from supply chain or whether that's amazing, you know, scientific innovation like vaccines. And so the opportunity from a B2B perspective is to really make sure that the work allows the story to shine through and is relevant to the audience that we speak to. And so it's incredibly important that you can be you know, specific and, and targeted and customized in what you're talking about. That's not to say that the big stories aren't also important, but I think the opportunity for B2B work to be really great is to be very audience specific, is to be, you know, segmented and relevant in who you want to speak to, and also to make sure that you tell a story that, you know, really connects the dot, not only for the B to B, but the B to B to C. Because at the end of the day, what we've seen is, you know, the consumers, customers, customers are ultimately the ones that are usually the, on the receiving end of if the B2B stuff work. And so we need to be able to make sure that we're talking in ways that also make sense when it lands B2B to C. Hopefully that makes sense, Ken. Totally makes sense. Um, you know, and it, 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 it is interesting to me always um, the fact that, you know, they talk a lot about the sort of the consumerization of B2B. And I think that's what you're you're leading into. But I, I wonder too, like, you know, um, and we'll get more to, to more of that a little bit later, but the impact of digital, you know, no matter which letter of the alphabet you're using to describe marketing has really been a game changer. But I feel like even more so in B2B where, you know, the, the, the category has been viewed as laggards in some ways, um, you know, reliance on events and some more traditional tactics had been kind of the rule of the day but no longer. So how does that really impact the work? Yeah, so look, nothing like a, a global pandemic to, you know, accelerate dramatically the change that was already underway. I think if you talk to B2B marketers, you know, we've been saying and doing for some time, you know, the things that show the shift from maybe some of the more traditional tactics, whether that's, you know, really in person or things about, you know, what are some of the traditional brand and awareness investments you might do and how has that shifted to digital? But what we've seen over the last, you know, again, 12 to 18 months is this massive acceleration of the move to digital. And that has come with both challenge and opportunity, right? Some of the challenges that really what you're talking about, and if I, if I talk about it from my perspective at SAP, we've had to change how we engage with our customers and our prospects, not only from a marketing perspective, but from a sales perspective. And so the opportunity for B2B marketing to become sort of that enabler of changing the engagement model um, on the sales front, I think can't be understated. I think the other piece, and, I, and to connect it back to my previous answer, the opportunity to be specific, to be segmented, to be relevant and customized in your message is much greater in a digital environment, right? If you make the right bets and you, and you reach the audiences in the places where they are, you obviously are going to reach them in, in, in some ways a, a smaller or more specific way but it means that what you say to them when you reach them matters more than ever. And so, you know, digital brings the opportunity to be personalized, right? It brings the opportunity to be relevant, whether you're talking about, you know, a geography or a role someone's playing or an industry they work in. But it also comes with the expectation that you will do that. And I think that for B2B marketers, you know, we have to make sure that we're being incredibly disciplined to say, look, these opportunities are there, 
But if we don't take advantage of them, we actually impact our effectiveness. Great, great. You know, I feel like it's this is a really hard year to be judging um, because I have seen some great work. Um, I've seen some great tactical executions as well. So, I mean, if you're as the, you know, the, the jury chair, you know, what, what do you think the judges are going to respond to given all the context that you laid out um, as like what, what winning looks like? Yeah, look, I think everyone is going to have their own point of view as to the things that, you know, have the most impact for them. But as a general statement, I think it's going to be, you know, what are the programs, campaigns, creative that really cut through all of the things that were happening in the world. And um, in many cases, those, in my opinion, have been things that have connected sort of the benefit or the B2B message with a more, um, you know, empathetic or altruist, altruistic, what's happening in the world, right? Why does this matter? And again, if I use some of the, the most common examples we see, right, we, we, you know, you think about more than ever in the last 18 months, where did the goods I buy come from? Or how are some of the things that are happening in the world, you know, on the scientific breakthrough front or on, or on other things, how are they happening? How are they being enabled in the background? And so the things that break through, I think, are going to connect those cool stories with why it matters to the world. Um, and obviously surrounding that are things like amazing creative and an incredible design in terms of you know, where you show up, right? And what are the creative ways that you engage with your audience? But fundamentally, I feel like the things that sort of cut through and really make an impact on, um, you know, the audience are going to be the ones that are most memorable for people. Great. So what what kind of inspires you in your role? I mean, you're at a, at a fantastic company, a fantastic B2B company that's done lots of great work and, and has had lots of success. So, you know, what kind of as a as a as a, a big leader in this industry, what what kind of makes you think like, oh, I can I I can do that. I want to do better, or you know, we're doing great and we can do more because of this. Yeah. So so look, part of the things that we talk about internally, and you know, our our company mission statement is is to help the world run better and improve people's lives. But to make that meaningful, you and we really have to think about well, what is it we do, and how does that make the world run better and improve people's lives? And and for me. It's about, you know, providing the, the software in my case, right? To our customers that allow them to be sort of the flag, you know, carrier of making the world run better and improving people's lives. What is it that our customers, whether they're in, you know, automobile manufacturing or whether they're in the medical professional or whether they're in, you know, any number of retail or CPG companies, what is it they're doing? Um, that's making the world a better place. And the pride that I think that, that we can take in enabling them to do that is really at the heart of what I think about, what motivates me, and ultimately what I think we want to talk about in a meaningful way to our audiences. Terrific. Is there, in, in, in terms of your strategy and things that you've done differently this year, you know, what was one of the biggest shifts that, you know, that you saw SAP undergo, you know, this past year, year and a half? And um, you know, some of the things that influenced you about this moment? So obviously, we've all gone through sort of the tactical shift, if you will, right? The shift from in-person events, let's say, and to digital, or the shift from literally traveling around the world and talking to people to doing things like this on Zoom and Teams. But I think the things that really, you know, have inspired me, and as I look forward, the, the shift allows us to do things like move more quickly, to take more risks. Um, to really embrace test and learn methodology and, and to understand that as marketers, part of how we will get better by, is by trying things and failing at them um, and how you use the data and the insights that you can gain to actually make more impactful decisions and impactful investments. And I think digital opens a whole new world to that so that you understand um, in real time or near real time something's working or if it isn't, are you reaching the audience? Is it resonating? Are they engaging with you? And, you know, that those are, um, those are faster and, and uh, in some ways, um, more exciting opportunities to really operate in the moment and figure out what it is you're doing and how it makes the impact. But I can't emphasize enough the importance and the opportunity that this has brought us to try new things, to take risks, and to embrace 
um, failure as a mechanism to uh, have more success in the future. What kind of advice would you give entrants? I mean, obviously they've already submitted their their awards and they're hoping to win. Everyone's got their fingers crossed. But you know, I guess as as somebody who's 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 leading the the awards, you know, what are some of the things that you think people should keep in mind when they're trying to put their best work forward, you know, to be judged? Yeah, I, look, I think the um, importance of authenticity, right, really telling the story that is authentic to you and your company and, you know, why it matters to your customers, to your customers, customers, and maybe to the world is incredibly important. Um, I think that if you think about where we all expect to be engaged with, um, you know, you talked a few minutes ago about the consumerization, if you will, of it. The importance of reaching customers where they are and reaching them in a, with a relevant message in the moment when they're looking for that message just cannot be more critical. And so I think that, you know, for the for the entrants who, who have submitted and for the winning entrants, I think you're going to see sort of that authenticity and storytelling continue to be a critical part of it. But I think you're going to see it in a way this year that we haven't seen in the past because we've been challenged to do things differently, because we've been challenged to do things digitally. Um, and I think it will drive a great deal of creativity and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, me too. I mean, and I guess on the flip side of that, you know, what are some things that you think that some mistakes that people might make or things that you think marketers should avoid, whether it's overall or when they're, you know, trying to, to be acknowledged and, and, you know, and, and win these types of, um, honors. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that we've seen um, over the last, you know, period of time have been companies who've done an amazing job of crafting a message that is relevant um, to what's happening in the world, but also relevant to who they are and what they do. And I think where there have been misses at times have been companies who have tried to tell a story um, that isn't as tied to what they do as an organization. I think that we've seen this in light of COVID and the global pandemic where there has been, you know, it, it felt like there was a period of time where like every television ad you saw sort of was a heartstring ad and talking about the world we were living in. And on the one hand, it was super relevant to what was happening in the world, but it wasn't always connected back to that authenticity of the advertiser. And so I think there has been a tendency to sort of make sure that you're wrapping your story up in the right way. And that's of course incredibly important because you don't want to be out in the world talking about something that doesn't matter to people and is tone deaf. But there also can be a tendency to sort of take that story, I think, and and sort of water down the meaning of it for people if you're trying to be too generic. I think we see the same things in in you know stories about sustainability or stories about companies that are doing good in the world. These are incredibly important stories and everyone should take pride in telling them. Um, but you ultimately have to make sure that it's authentic and connect back to who you are and what your company's doing. And so it's probably the area that I've seen some of the greatest successes. And it's also some of the areas where I think, you know, there have been, um, there have been some significant failures of making that connection. Is there a category or platform or channel that you're really excited to see some entries in? Um, given all that's changed so much, you know, that, um, you know, that, that you think is going to be especially cool? Yeah, there's, there's probably two, and I think they connect together and they connect with what I just said as well. So I'm, I'm super excited to see the best response to change. Um, I think that the opportunity over the last 12, 18 months has been enormous opportunity for change and creativity and cutting through the noise. Um, and an expectation, frankly, of the world that, that what we are talking about and we are saying in our in our marketing, our communications, our advertising, and everything is is tied to you know what's relevant and matters in terms of what's going on in the world. And the second connected to it is B two B for good. I think there is an endless opportunity for um, you know B two B companies to be thinking about what their contribution to the world is. Um, you know, I said earlier, but it's never been more important to be able to answer the question about where materials come from for your goods, about what the um, you know status of your supply chain is, about understanding that people care if things are being manufactured in a sustainable way, if they're being sourced in a sustainable way, you know, if your supply chain is is um, is easily understood and, and followed. And I think that 
that sort of B2B for good part of the story will connect a little bit to the response to change. And I'm super excited to see, you know, some of the creative and impactful things that have come out of those campaigns. Great, great. Um, yeah, no, it is interesting. And, and I think it's, it's something that people are much more aware and thoughtful about these days. Um, so your, your big piece of advice or, or, you know, no pressure, you know, if there's two pieces or, you know, just something that you think people should be thinking about um, as, they, as they move along, um, navigating this, in, this environment that we're all in now. Yeah, so I think, first of all, it's incredibly important that as marketers, as B2B marketers, we're, we're thinking much more about how we adapt to our customers' needs and wants and where they are in their relationship with us. And so thinking about and putting yourself in the shoes of your customers, I think, is critically important. In terms of something, you know, within that that's really actionable, I can't emphasize enough um, the opportunity that really using the data to drive the decisions that you make, but also to move quickly, right? And to have comfort with making mistakes, with challenging the status quo, but doing it from a point of knowledge. The data told us X, so we're going to try Y. And I think that the opportunity with all things digital, right, is that the insights that we have are deeper and more profound than they've ever been before. But as marketers, it's incumbent upon us to do something with that information and actually, you know, have it manifest as a change in what we're doing, how we're investing our dollars, how quickly we're moving, all of those things. So it ultimately comes back to using the data to drive the insights so that when you do engage with your customers and prospects, it's in a super relevant way. Perfect. Well, thank you for that. Um, and thank you for everybody viewing at home. Um, I'm really excited to see all the work. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough on you, Allison, because it's going to be hard to choose. And um, but We've thank got you. We've a panel so much. of great judges, so we'll be great, I'm sure. Yeah, we do. We really do have great judges this year, so um, I think we're all in good hands. But um, but looking forward to seeing the work and celebrating it. And um, and thank you for taking the time to uh, to share your insights. I thank appreciate you for having that. me. And thank you again for everybody for uh, for tuning in.